that of a mustard seed. Please be seated. This morning we have an analogy of what the kingdom of God is. And we need to ask ourselves, who or what is this kingdom that we speak of? There's a prayer that I know, that I'm sure that all of you know. And I'll ask you to say that prayer with me now. As our Father has taught us, let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. It will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now that is the kingdom of God. We therefore are the kingdom of God and we are expected to do certain things so that this kingdom continues. But we need to really look at its beginning. And we get a very humble beginning as we compare, as Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to that of a mustard seed. A seed that is very tiny. Anybody ever saw a mustard seed? Indeed not. <laughs> Some said yes, they saw the mustard seed. But it's a lot tinier than that. Those would be thought that buddy expensive mustard. But the thing is, a mustard seed, tiny as it is, has potential. Has potential to turn into a shrub, a tool, which more or less resembles a tree. Now, it is not necessarily a tree, but it looks like a tree. Now, that is a very big shrub, or as we would say, a bush. So this is a bush that is as tall as a tree. Now, that is a very humble beginning. Now, in comparing the kingdom of God to a tiny mustard seed, Jesus was using, or he uses rather, a very powerful illustration. So while the mustard seed is the smallest, it has somehow grown into something that is very big. There are very few things on this earth that are as big as the church. The church began with one individual. That one individual is Jesus himself. And he is walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee and he sees Peter and his brother. Who was his brother? That's the quiz for today. You sure it was James? You sure it wasn't Andrew? James and John, Peter and Andrew. Okay? All right, we ain't getting the points today. But he sees these two brothers mending a net and he says, Follow me. He didn't say, Follow me and you can get anything. That came afterwards. He says, Follow me and immediately they follow. Clearly, there had to be something about Jesus. Either that, or these men were foolish. Because no person just says, follow me, and we ups and go. Yet still, there are persons that we always somehow seem to follow. There are things that we somehow always seem to follow. I saw a video just this week about the wearing of pants and they looked at the evolution of the wearing of pants the fact that a few years ago pants were worn up here then they came down a little bit then they came down a little further then they went below the waist then they went below the bottom and now it went into the future and you saw a gentleman shuffling around with his pants down by his ankles yet still People follow that. What are we doing as members of the kingdom of God for persons to follow us? 
are persons following the kingdom of God. Well, you ain't sure. That's not like a no. I think in some places there's no. And the thing is, are we to point blame at them then and say, y'all not doing what God wants? Or do we need to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, are we doing what God wants? Because if persons are not following, clearly what we're doing is not attractive to anybody. Is it that it's not attractive or we've given way to so many other things? The kingdom of God, more or less, has already mushroomed into this big shrub. The thing is, are we satisfied with the shrub or is there more that can come? The church started with Jesus. Somehow, others bring it a little further down. We put that at, at, at sorry, Peter. The church began with Peter. Peter is considered to be the first pope. Remember, Jesus was asking, who do men say that I am? And bold as he is, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus then responded, you are Petros, and on this Petra I will build my church. You are a small rock, and on this big rock, your faith, I will build my church. Along with Peter, and the other ten, because we lost one, Peter and the other ten went to different places. The gospel of Christ, the church, is taken to different areas of the world. When you hear world, consider this. World is what they knew existed. So when you hear about the whole world being flooded, it's the whole world as they knew it. The boy didn't know nothing about Barbados then. Okay? It is the world as they knew it. So they took the gospel into the world. The eleven. So consider that these 11 persons go to probably 11 people. You multiply that and you get your number. That number then goes to some others and more and more. So you have this setup of a pyramid where you start with one and you continue to branch out and you get bigger and bigger and bigger. That is the church. However, if we were to look at that pyramid now, it somehow seems as if persons are eating out and pulling out pieces of the pyramid and it is missing. Because many of us have taken the stance where the church is a worldwide institution and we're happy. Is it that the gospel has been taken to the whole world or we now need to use the gospel in the whole world? It is okay to tell people about God, or rather it is okay to tell people about the gospel of Christ. It is a totally different thing to live it. Because a lot of us tell people about God. Are we living God? That is where the difference comes. Where persons can see and experience. Because Jesus himself was an experience. What do people experience when they come into this kingdom? Because the kingdom which Jesus compared to the shrub is a place where birds can find rest. Can anybody find rest in the church? Y'all looking at me like I said something wrong. If you can say should be, don't say nothing. The question was, can anybody find rest in the church? You're sure? You are positive about that? Okay, good. I believe you. However, I know different. Because when persons come, what are they coming for? If a stranger comes through the door now, what is that person looking for? You don't know. He or she would have to know what they're looking for. However, they should expect something. They should expect to be welcomed. They should expect to feel a part of what is going on. The problem with that is, 
that's like tourism. Tourism is our business, let's play our part. And we have an assumption of who we need to play this part with or to. So the average person does not experience Barbados because you have to be of a particular complexion, you have to have a particular size spending. And we assume what tourism or who tourism is geared at. Church is pretty much the same thing. Because if persons come, what are they going to experience? The average person, not the visitor, will not experience what they should. Because we have that reserve for visitors. That is something we should all experience, but we do not because you say good morning, welcome to St. Luke to the visitors. And this is not a poke at the ushers because this is something that we can all do. All of us have a job as members of the kingdom of God. The thing is, the average person does not experience the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God somehow exists in certain branches in this mustard tree. You all follow me? You sure? Are you not going to hint at anything? I will say what I mean. So we have our little cliques and clubs. And persons within them experience God as we know God. Persons outside the paling of this grace don't necessarily get to experience God as we're sharing God. That is not our role. Our role is to take the love of God to all. Not some, not to pick and choose because it is not your love. If you have a cake, you can share your cake with whoever you want to share your cake with. The love of God is different. That is what exists in this shrub. Because all of us can come and find refuge in this shrub. But it doesn't happen. We need to move beyond the mere existence in the kingdom of God to understanding a little bit more. Because this shrub, in all of its glory, is used for something else. Most of us, however, has only, have only managed to exist in it. So you come to church, your dues are paid, and you're good to go. Straight to heaven, we will go. It is more than that. Because there are too many of us that come and just sit down. We abide in the shrub. We need to be able to understand a little bit more. Because this shrub, the leaves and the seeds, are used for medicine, for condiments, for all sorts of things. The thing is, how practical are we making the church for the average person? Is church just a place for persons to come and sit? Or is church something that people experience? Something that will cause a difference in your life? Think about a hot dog. The difference that mustard on a hot dog makes. Now think about a person's life and think about the difference the real church, the real Christian in the life of that individual will make. We need to go a lot deeper than just seeing a tree but understanding the things that this tree can do. Because we all have in our own hands the power to change lives, to make things better. But we come and we sit as birds in the tree and we sing our complaint. And we know everything else that is wrong, but we're not willing to do anything. It is not so much that the tree is there for us to sit in, but we are the tree. We are the shrub. We are the ones that offer something to persons' lives. If we're not, then we're not doing what we should do. Which takes us to another story that Jesus told. And if these branches really can't do what they do, chop them off and throw them in the fire. But you see, God in me and I ain't God. And God loves. 
and he gives chance after chance after chance even when we know we don't deserve it we have the opportunity to still make a difference many of us however are satisfied with where the church is and that is it so the church has spread it is a worldwide thing everybody knows about god you don't have to do anything you have to do something we all have to do something because there comes a time when doubt creeps into our mind when anger somehow takes over when depression hugs us up and holds us tight it doesn't just happen to you it happens to others as well we therefore have to be there with the reassuring words of the gospel that is what this shrub is there for to offer something to the world from humble beginnings yes it is something big but is it just something to look at in parts of the world the church is still spreading in other parts of the world the church is just there it has been there for a long time and we assume it will always be there but if we look closely we will see that there are persons eroding and eating away at the church y'all heard about ISIS y'all still here you've heard about ISIS you've seen anything that ISIS has done you're sure if not look for it because this is some serious stuff if we assume this does not affect us or will not affect us we're wrong because from humble beginnings big things start ISIS is no comparison for the church not in terms of numbers but the thing is the giant that church is is standing by and watching a little rat nibble at a corner and we're doing nothing and a few things will happen that little rat will eat and eat and eat till the corner gone and eat some more and when it realizes it has a source of good food it will call others and the same way out of something very minuscule the church started out of something very minuscule something very sinister will bloom and blossom as well we somehow need to realize in as much as God is calling us to be loving God is not calling us to be foolish there comes a time when the church needs to stand up for something there comes a time when we need to stop talking and do something but we like to talk and we like to pray and God will sort it out then we can say God has no hands but our hands he has no feet but our feet but that is a story for another time we are the kingdom of God we need to understand that that every one of us has a voice every one of us must use that voice because if we do not the world will not hear about the kingdom of God the world will not hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ and it is not good enough to just stand back and look at all the bad and the wrong things that are happening in society because in many regard if we're honest with ourselves we know that we are to blame because we saw these things germinating and we did nothing there are some things that are in our society that we could well do without but we operate on a level that is strange we just don't pay it any mind and we hope that it goes away and then we talk about the mountain that we have to climb I will tell you why we have a mountain to climb because things have been happening for years and we continue to sweep them under the carpet and the carpet grow a lump then it grow a hump then it grow a hill now the carpet in many places is a mountain because those same issues mushroomed into problems and we ignored them and pretended that they were not here that is not what the church is called to 
The church is called to deal with certain issues, to voice an opinion, to stand up for something. Not the priests, the church. Because when you ask who is the church or what is the church, the answer you get suddenly is, we are the church. But when something has to be done, is the priest's job. The church council. So the priest has to stand up alone and assume that he has the backing of the church. When in actual fact we know that we are not that devoted or committed. Because we are still very much in a very, an infant stage. Jesus probably had about 120 odd persons that were devoted initially. If that many. Because persons came and they saw the experience. They had the experience, but they left. Because they wanted more. They were not willing to do the work. Remember the feeding of the 5,000. Everybody ate and were full. But we want more magic. Show us some more. Feed us some more. Then Jesus even asked, what is it you're coming for? You want more bread and fish? We need to understand things will happen, yes. But we have a job to do. A lot of it comes down to what I, the individual, am willing to do. And in as much as we claim to love church and to love God, the true test comes when there's work to be done. How many people turn up when there's work to be done? You get a lot of promises, but you don't get a lot of hands. In as much as you have a crowd of persons on Sundays, when there is work to be done, you get a group of people. So the crowd turns into group. Two totally different things. It is the same thing when we go out into the world. If we go out as some paltry little group, some ragtag team, persons will maul us. The thing is, we are not willing to go out. And the few that are, well, like sheep in the midst of wolves. We have numbers. Above all, we have faith. Let us together use those numbers and use that faith to continue the spread of the kingdom of God. Let us not just sit back and assume that God will do the work. God has placed us here to do the work. It is not to look around and see and assume that somebody else will do it. If we all did it, it would be better. Consider the mustard seed. Consider yourself today in the midst of all of this as a mustard seed. Consider the shrub and realize that God can work miracles with the very little. Amen.